Hello everyone, this is Professor Adrino from New Zealand and I'm an expert in uh, fire evacuation and today I want to comment a bit on the terrible accident that we saw unfold in front of all of us on the 1st of January in Switzerland. Yet another fire in a nightclub. I put together some slides to give you an overview of what uh, happened but this is not an investigation that I've done because yet we still need to have official data to be released to fully understand what happened in this tragic event. So I hope that this video is going to help you to unfold some of the science behind the fire and evacuation and it's going to help you to raise more awareness on what's happened in these kind of disasters. So let's go and have a look at them together. It has been extremely sad and distressful to see this image coming from Switzerland and see all this fire has been spreading and killing, taking away so many lives, 40 people and over 100 injured. It really broke my heart. I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with this uh, nasty image that came from uh, the inside of the nightclub and it's incredibly shocking to see all this fire manage to spread inside, take over the full place. But this is not a real new accident to happen in a nightclub, it's not the first time it ever happened and unfortunately there is a long history of these events. You might remember that in uh, March 2025 there was a massive fire in North Macedonia and with my colleague uh, Mila Dagani, we wrote this piece on the conversation. In this piece, we discussed the history of uh, fire in nightclubs, showing that most of the time they've been taking so many lives. And there are some uh, specific trends that are always uh, reappearing in this kind of disaster that I want to talk to you today. So if you go in this article, and you'll find the link in the description below, you will see this chart in which you can go and click and see and discover where the biggest nightclub FAD took place. You can see that the, unfortunately the data represent the number of people that perish in these fires. So you can see that one of the deadliest was in uh, USA in uh, 1942 and it took nearly 500 people lives. Another major one happened in 2000 in uh, China taking 309 lives. And another massive one was the Kicks nightclub fire in Brazil taking nearly 250 lives. So you can see that there is a lot on the map. Unfortunately, too many dots. I'm really worried that those numbers might increase if we don't take serious action as a society. The first question that I want to answer in this video is why are nightclubs so risky for fires? A common issue in this type of fire are pyrotechnics, fireworks, and flammable material. In fact, it's not the first time that we see fireworks igniting fire in nightclubs. There is a long history. Let's go and have a look at them. For instance, the Station Nightclub fire in USA was ignited by fireworks, took 100 lives. Let's not forget the Cromanon Nightclub fire in Argentina in 2004. In this case, we had 194 deaths. Once again, another one in Russia, still ignited by fireworks, that took 158 lives in 2009. Once again, you can see flames spreading through the ceiling. Another one is the Kiss nightclub fire in Brazil that took 242 people in 2013. Still ignited by fireworks. And a more recent one is the collective nightclub fire in Romania that took 64 lives. In all these examples, you can see the fire spreading through the ceiling. So it's really reminding us what happened in the Switzerland nightclub fire. Inflammable material are one of the major issues, especially because allowed the fire to spread too quickly. In this case, it seems that uh, the fire spread uh, to the ceiling. It was full of uh, acoustic foam to reduce the spread of uh, sound. This material can be really effective from an acoustic point of view, but it can become a nightmare because it can uh, allow the fire to spread too quickly, not allowing enough time for people to evacuate. Many people have been discussing about the flashover. So let's see this example from uh, an East experiment showing what is a flashover. You can see that uh, at the beginning, the fire is local, it's catching fire on the couch, and slowly it's gonna generate a heat and a layer of a hot smoke at the top of the room that is gonna slowly filling up the room and making it hotter and hotter. You will see that soon that everything is gonna get uh, so hot in the room that it's gonna start decomposing. You will see something on the floor in a few seconds that is gonna start uh, decomposing and ignite without having a direct contact with the flame. 
and after this critical temperature of 500 600 degree is going to be reached you'll see that the fire is not going to be any longer local but it's going to be spread in the full room and there is no chance to survive in this really extreme situation so that's why firefighters are well trained to recognize the symptoms of a flash over about to happen and to get out of that environment as soon as possible Another common issue that we need to discuss is the overcrowdedness of this environment in nightclubs and the presence of blocked exit or no sufficient number of exits that allow a speedy evacuation. I managed to find on LinkedIn a really nice reconstruction of the Switzerland uh, nightclub. In this video, you can see the basement of the nightclub where the fire was started. And then there is a connecting uh, pathway that link this uh, basement with uh, the ground level where there was the main bar and eventually there was another enclosed environment in front of that bar so if we go and see what was available online this is the reconstruction of the environment of course it's not accurate in terms of dimension but you can see that uh, there were different uh, environment connect with each other and it seems to have a single way out. So in that case, people in the basement were supposed to take a stairs, pass through the second environment with the bar, and then a second enclosed environment in the ground level, and then have the chance to get out of the environment. Here you can see a video from the inside, from the basement, and this person is gonna rush through the stairs and find himself on the ground level and then run to the exit. What I want to, you to focus is that there are uh, three possible bottleneck in this environment. The first at the beginning of the stairs because it's a narrowing pathway and many people were claiming that the path were really small for the crowd size but yet this needs to be investigated by official sources. Then there is a second bottleneck up connecting the ground level bar with the terrace and then eventually the final bottleneck at the real end of the nightclubs. Another point that needs to be verified and discussed and investigated is the number of people inside this space. We have the possibility to run evacuation simulation to figure it out how long will it take to escape from this environment, but yet we don't have enough information to have accurate geometry that will allow us to simulate this evacuation scenario. This is an interesting feature published by The Guardian showing uh, the basement floor area. And with this image, I want to highlight how close the fire seems to be with the only way out of this nightclub, at least from the basement area. Another interesting visualization is the one developed by Steve Wilcock that shows how the fire might have spread uh, through the stairs and all these might have created the disruption for the evacuation process. In fact, whenever there is uh, low visibility, we are aware of, well as a scientist that the speed of uh, humans decrease, and as well there is uh, the chance that they get intoxicated and this might enable them to evacuate by themselves. Another interesting image posted on the Corriere della Sera, an Italian press, shows that uh, there was a second way out from the basement, this is not clear because there are different uh, versions of the floor plan of this basement. And uh, there are some uh, reports claiming that uh, this evacuation exit wasn't accessible or usable for uh, the people inside the nightclub. Regardless of the presence of a second evacuation exit, we are also well aware that people might not be familiar with this evacuation exit, so they might end up using the evacuation exit they are familiar with. So the usual way in and out of a space is something that we have been observing in many other evacuation disaster. Many people have been talking about stampede, crowd crash. Here I put some definition that might help you clarify what is the difference between a stampede and crowd crash. If we go and see the image at the exit of this space, you will see that there was a overwhelming situation at the exit. It might look like people really got stuck because of the high density and the floor couldn't move through the exit of the nightclub. So this is another point that will require some uh, more investigation of what happened and why this situation didn't allow us move flow outside the nightclub.
Another typical things that we observe in a fire disaster is a slow response and uh, low risk perception of what is about to happen. This is a really popular video that probably you have already seen thousands of times on the media. You can see that the occupants, instead of uh, evacuating straight away, are there recording with their smartphone and try to extinguish a fire using some of their clothing. And sometimes it's uh, horrendous to see that people try even to extinguish a fire with a fire extinguisher when the fire is, is way beyond the size of something that can be managed with a fire extinguisher. So there might be an underestimation of the risk of the situation like in this case because people are not aware that the fire could spread in an exponential rate, capturing them in the enclosed environment. Another factor that can explain the behavior of people is of course intoxication because in nightclub we all know that there are people drinking. And this is, from one side, another really combustible material, so it's gonna be really nasty for the fire, but intoxication might also affect the capability of people to understand what is the risky situation and try to take action as soon as possible. And of course, there is an attachment with the place because they've been paid to get into this place and probably they just bought a new drink and they want to finish it. So there is this kind of attachment that doesn't push them to get out as soon as, as possible. Social interaction. Social influence is another key factor that explains why people don't respond straight away during a fire emergency. People might be feel foolish to evacuate before everyone else, so they try to figure it out what everyone else is doing. Another thing that we know is that the response of people that are in charge, like staff, of a nightclub can be essential to have a speedy evacuation. We try to rely much more on the information released by officials or people that we trust in our environment, and this rule, rule structure might depend before the situation of the fire. And another factor that might have affected this fire, but we know that has affected many others, it could be the weather condition outside. If you know that outside it can be really cold, really rainy, you feel really demotivated to start evacuating as soon as possible. You might start feeling like, let's go and have a look at what's the situation evolved and then I'm gonna have enough time to get out of this environment. So aligned with the article that I wrote with uh, Mila Dagani on the conversation, I want to reiterate this statement that we should start banning pyrotechnics and fireworks inside nightclubs. There is a long history of this disaster we have been experiencing so many deaths. I hope you have learned something from this video. It has been really sad to go through and retrieve all this information. And the only things we can do now is to pray for the victim and for their family and for the people. And wish to all the people injured in this fire for a full recovery. Thank you.